Welcome to Grace Family International Church. The following you're about to listen to is a message from Rev. Diola Ojo, our senior pastor. So sharpen your pencil, grab your notebook and Bible, because you're about to be empowered. Listen and be blessed. Glory to God. Obedience, the key to miraculous living. Let us pray. Precious Father, I want to thank you for showing us the way to go. For giving us all the equipping we need when we get to the place. And for allowing your word to come to pass in our lives. And giving us blessings, favor, peace, joy. For all this we're grateful. Father, I ask that your people would receive the engrafted word. Which will bring salvation. The fullness of salvation. In healing, in health, in deliverance, in every form of blessing to their lives in the mighty name of Jesus. And the church shouts, Amen. Amen. Obedience, the key to miraculous living. Now the key to lasting success, we've been talking about divine direction. The key to you enjoying divine direction is your obedience. Amen. Now, success, when people say, I'm successful, you look at this person and say, this person is successful. Why are they successful? Because they found a way to be in the right place at the right time, doing the right things, and then it produces success. Why are people failures? Sometimes because they're in the wrong place. Or they're, <laughs> Hello, they're doing the wrong things. Come on now. Or they are there at the wrong time. And when you put all those things together, it leads to failure opportunities come to people to change their lives. Opportunities come. Opportunities come. But it's those people who seize the opportunity that are going to be blessed. Now, when you have direction, when you have divine direction, what happens is that you're in the right place at the right time, doing the right thing, and then you get blessed. Now, some years back, I went to preach at a church. I went to preach at a church in, in Ibadan. I was a guest minister there. And, of course, ladies went with me. So, when they were preached... And then after the service, now they're going to give us some things, you know, because we're gone, they're going to give me an honorarium, but they also wanted to give the people who had come with me. Now, there were two sisters who were in one of our branches, leaders in the bottom, and they decided to just come after service, just to see me so that before I, I go to Lagos. Now, just before they were about to give those things, those ladies came, so they joined the team. So what happened? The people who were going to give the gifts had to go and bring more. They were in the right place at the right time, doing the right things, and therefore they also got the blessing. My prayer for you is that there are some blessings that it may look as if you are not even part of the team, but somehow you will just find yourself there in the nick of time and you'll be included in the blessing. Yeah. Hallelujah. When we look at people and say this person has failed, this person is not a success, many times it's because they were never there when opportunity came. Opportunity will show up. But if people are not there when opportunity shows up, then they cannot take advantage of opportunity. And then before you know it, they're just marking time. You will not mark time in Jesus' name. The secret to success, the secret to miraculous living is knowing what God wants and doing it. You know what he wants and then you do it. Some people want to do what God wants. But if they don't know what God wants, then they cannot do it. And if they don't do what God wants, then they do not qualify for the miracle. But if you know what he wants and, he, and, and you do what he wants, then you're going to have miracles. Listen carefully to me. You know that theme, bountiful harvest. That theme, bountiful harvest, is also a season. We have entered as a church into the season of bountiful harvest. Doors are just going to be opening. Hallelujah. People who said no to you before, and you know, maybe the decision is a key decision, and they've said no, they're going to change their minds and they're going to say yes. Hallelujah. That is the season. But you know what? It is those who are part of us who will take advantage of it. I congratulate you because you are part of us. In fact, congratulate three people around you and say, congratulations, you are part of us. So it's the season of bountiful harvest. Congratulations. John chapter 2. John chapter 2. I'm going to see God do some incredible things in this season. You're going to get some things. You know, there are times that you are praying for something, you are praying for something. After a while, it has taken a while. You just get to a point where you are not even praying about it anymore. But you know, when you are not praying about it anymore, in this season, you are going to get those things. Hallelujah! Glory to God. God will remember you. 
Oh, I can hear somebody's name in the spirit. And God says, I have remembered you. This is now your appointed season. And you will receive that which you have been expecting from me. Oh, lift your hands and just bless the Lord. Just bless the Lord. Just bless the Lord. Just thank the Lord. The spirit of the Lord is here. And the Holy Spirit is speaking. I hear the spirit of the Lord say they may gather but not of me. Everyone that gathers against you will fall for your sake. And somebody here, you don't even know some people are gathering against you. But God says, don't worry about it. Even when you found out, I have already given you the victory. Oh, let's celebrate Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory, glory, glory. John chapter 2. John chapter 2, we're going to read from the first chapter. John chapter 2 verse 1. On the third day, there was a wedding in Cana of Galilee. And the mother of Jesus was there. Now both Jesus and his disciples were invited to the wedding. And when they ran out of wine, the mother of Jesus said to him, they have no wine. Jesus said to her, woman, what does your concern have to do with me? My hour has not yet come. His mother said to his servants, to the servants, whatever he says to you, do it. Now there were set there six water pots of stone, according to the manner of purification of the Jews, containing 20 or 30 gallons apiece. Jesus said to them, fill the water pots with water, and they filled them up to the brim. And he said to them, draw some out now, and take it to the master of the feast. And they took it. When the master of the feast had tasted the water that was made wine, and did not know where it came from, but the servants who had drawn the water knew, the master of the feast called the bridegroom, and he said to him, every man at the beginning sets out the good wine. And when the guests have well drawn, then the inferior. You have kept the good wine until now. This beginning of signs, Jesus did in Cana of Galilee and manifested his glory and his disciples believed on him. For you to be led into miraculous living, you must be obedient. Jesus' mother said to those and said, whatever he says to you, do it. Now, if you put yourself in this servant's shoes, what Jesus Christ told them actually didn't make sense. Does it make sense? Hello? Does it make sense? Say, pour water into a pot. You pour the water into the pot. Remember, what they're expecting is wine. Then Jesus Christ says, okay, take out of the water that you have already poured. You know it is water. You are the one that went to fetch the water. You are the one that poured the water. When you still pour the thing, was still water. He now tells you, take it and go and give it to the master of ceremony. And it is supposed to be wine you are taking. You know, any point in that, those people could have thought of being rebellious. Ah, this thing doesn't make sense. I'm not going to do it. You know, I now get there and the man is, he, you know, maybe he tastes it and it's water. And you know, there are some masters of ceremony that can be funny. And just throw the cup back, back at them and just say, what is Did I ask for water? But they went obediently. And in the process of time as they were going, the water changed to wine. When is the specific time it changed? We don't know. Listen to me. You don't know the specific time when your turn around will come. But it will come. It will come. It will come. So what you need to be is to be what? Obedient. Whatever it says to you, do it. Number one, obedience to the written word. Obedience is the key to miraculous living. Obedience to the written word of God. The word of God that has already been written, you've got to obey it. The things that you see in the Bible that the Bible says do, you've got to do it. The things that you see in the Bible that the Bible says do not do, you've got to make sure that you do not do it. Obedience to the written word. Listen to me. People who refuse to obey the written word cannot expect further leading. You cannot refuse to obey the written word and then you think the Holy Spirit will speak to you. You cannot refuse to obey the written word and you think an angel will appear. But when you are obeying the written word, that's when you can expect further instruction and further leading as you need it. As you need it. Hallelujah. If you need an angel to appear, then an angel will appear. If your situation demands an intervention of an angel that appears physically, then an angel will appear. Because you know what? You are doing the word of God. There are so many people who say, look, this situation, ah, eh, I don't think anything can happen. But if an angel appears, no, but you have to believe the word of God first. That God is the God of all possibilities and God can do anything. Amen. Look at Luke chapter 16. Let's look at an interesting story here. The word of God is what has to be above every situation, every circumstance. And the word should be enough. If you have the word of God, you don't need further signs. And it takes you believing the word of God. Hallelujah. And if you believe the word of God, then you can enjoy the blessings of God in every area. If the Bible says you are the head and not the tail, believe it. Believe it in your vocation. Believe it in your education. 
Believe it in your daily living. I am the head and not the tail. I am above only and not beneath. Why? The word of God says it. And the word of God says by the stripes of Jesus, you have been healed. Whether it is raining or the sun is shining, you have been what? You have been healed. By the stripes of Jesus, you have been healed. All the people who are healed, shout amen. amen. All right. Let's look at this interesting story. Luke chapter 16, we'll read from verse 19. There was a certain rich man who was clothed in purple and fine linen and feared sumptuously every day. But there was a certain beggar named Lazarus, full of sores, who was laid at his gate, desiring to be fed with the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table. Moreover, the dogs came and licked his sores. So it was that the beggar died and was carried by the angels to Abraham's bosom. The rich man also died and was buried. Who died first? Who died first? I said, who died first? The beggar. Who died next? How many people died? <laughs> Both died. Both the poor and the rich. One day, one day. Eh? They died. They leave this earth. So, the poor man died first. Of course, he probably didn't have good nutrition and all that. He died first. But then, in spite of all the excellent nutrition of the rich man, one day, one day too, the man died. In fact, let's say in spite. Sometimes because of all... <laughs> because of all the overfeeding and all the overeating. Come on now. He too died. All right, let's read on. And being in torment in hate, he lifted up his eyes and saw Abraham afar off and Lazarus in his bosom. Then he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me and send Lazarus that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue. For I am tormented in this flame. But Abraham said, Son, remember that in your lifetime you received your good things. And likewise, Lazarus evil things. But now he is comforted and you are tormented. And besides all this, between us and you, there is a great gulf fixed, so that those who want to pass from here to you cannot, nor can those from there pass to us. Then he said, I beg you therefore, Father, that you will send him to my father's house, for I have five brothers that you may testify to them, lest they also come to this place of torment. Pause, pause and let, you know, let's pause, let me say something there. Isn't it interesting that even in hell, this rich man still thought he could be sending Lazarus up and down. I don't know if you got that from that story. Uh, let, send him to come and dip his finger and you know, uh, in water and touch to cool me. He's no longer your servant. The man is free now. Hallelujah. The slave is finally free. Come on now. And uh, you know, Abraham says, no, no, no. That can't happen. He says, okay, now send him back. Just, he just must be an errand boy. Just send him back. Do something <laughs> again. But <What's>, uh, hmm. <laughs> Lazarus level has changed forever. Hallelujah. Mm. Now, he says, verse 27, I beg you therefore, Father, you that you would send him to my father's house. For I have five brothers, that I may testify to them, lest they also come to this place of torment. Abraham said to him, they have Moses and the prophets. Let them hear them. And he said, no, Father Abraham, but if one goes to them from the dead, they will repent. But he said to him, if they do not hear Moses and the prophets, neither will they be persecuted, but, sorry, neither will they be persuaded Though one rise from the dead. If they will not hear the law and the prophets. If they will not take the word of God. There is no need for us to send any spectacular sign to them. Listen and listen good. There are a lot of Christians nowadays who are looking for something spectacular. The word is the one that you need to hold on to and live your life by. Are you listening to me? During worker service this morning, somebody was, you know, um, sharing. The person I was sharing was talking about the fact that the, the, his mother's church, they announced that there was going to be a program at 5 o'clock, that one special man of God was coming, that was going to reverse death or something like that. He said the program was to start 5. By quarter to 5, the place was already jammed. There were no seats. If, <laughs> why are all of, all of them rushing there? The man will reverse death. They don't want to be taught, oh, it's not about teaching. But he said, if you invite them to a church like this, where they will hear the word, know the word for themselves, and then apply it. No, they don't want to come. They just want some signs. Some signs. I say, you know what? No, 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 it's not the signs. It's the word. Hear the word. Believe the word. Do the word. It is the word. Hallelujah. Let me tell you this. You know, signs, wonders, it, they really happen as God wills. You cannot force the hand of God and say, God, today, today, an angel must appear to me. There's nothing like that. Or say, you know, 
Father Abraham, let Lazarus, he must go down. And if he goes down now to go and tell my brother, from the day, if there's such a fantastic sign, then they'll believe. He said, no, it's the word. If they will not take the word, they are not going to receive any further signs. It's the word. Your obedience, if you're going to have miraculous living, your obedience to the word of God is key and is the foundation. When you already know the word of God about an area, you cannot be saying, God, speak to me again. Have me say, okay, God, tell me whether I should forgive this person or not forgive the person. The Bible says forgive. The Bible says forgive. Praise the Lord. It is already there in the Bible. So the things that the Bible already says, you obey the word of God. You want to live miraculous living and you've got to obey the word. Now listen to me. The word of God is actually prophecy. Okay? They don't listen to Moses and what? Moses and what? And the prophets. That's what I said. The word of God is actually prophecy. The Bible says the holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Spirit. After the prophecy had come, then it was written down. The word of God is actually prophecy. The word of God is in, is in itself a sign. The word of God is in itself the wonder. Hallelujah. Now listen to me. When the Bible says by the stripes of Jesus you have been healed, what is that? It is prophecy you have been. By whose stripes you were healed. That's a prophecy. You were already healed. So it's already speaking forth concerning your future. You were already healed. It is a prophecy. It's already a sign. It's already about your future. Amen. So what you need to do is to come to that. You read that word and say, oh wow, this is a prophecy concerning me. It's as if the Holy Spirit has just spoken with a loud voice that I could hear with, you know, like an audible voice. And I receive that word. You obey. Hallelujah. The written word of God. The word of God is prophecy. Second Peter chapter 1, verses 20 to 21. Second Peter chapter 1, verses 20 to 21. Glory to God. Are you getting anything from this? Amen. Second Peter. Chapter 1. Verses 20 to 21. Knowing this first, that no prophecy of what? Are you there? Can we read that verse together? Knowing this first, that's what? No prophecy of the scripture. The scripture is prophecy. Said no prophecy of the scripture is of any private interpretation. For the prophecy came not in all time by the will of man, but holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. So these scriptures, this your Bible is what? Is prophecy. In Isaiah chapter 55 verse 11, Isaiah chapter 55 verse 11, God says, so shall my word be that goes forth out of my mouth. It shall not return to me void. It will accomplish the thing that I sent it. So everything, every blessing that you see in this Bible, every promise that is there, the promises of God that are yes and amen, they are what? They are the word of God that has been spoken ahead of you and it will not come back to God void. It must accomplish. Hallelujah. So which means when you take, when you take any promise in the word of God and you live your life by it, you're living in prophecy. You're living in miracles. You will find out that there will be manifestation of that word. It will be as it was told you. It said, blessed is she that believed, for there will be what? A performance. There will be what? A performance. There will be what? Shout it out loud. There will be what? There will be a performance of those things that were told her of the Lord. There will be a performance of the things. The prophecies of the scripture will come to pass. So when you are reading your Bible, don't just read it like, okay, I'm just reading stories. No, I'm reading prophecies. God is showing me the things, the good things, the great things, the awesome things that he's going to bring to pass in my life. Amen? Obedience is the key to miraculous living. Number one, obedience to the written word of God. Number two, obedience to the voice of your conscience. Obedience to the voice of your conscience. Sometimes your conscience will speak to you and say, that's not right. You shouldn't do that. You shouldn't have said that. That's your conscience. It's not a voice. But inside you, you know, that's not right. You're judging between good and evil. You have to obey it. You have to obey it. And you're thinking, when I get to that place, ah, I'm going to fight. And your conscience is telling you, that's not right. What are you fighting over? Children of God do not fight. You obey the voice of your conscience. Amen? You obey the voice of your conscience. A good conscience is critical to miraculous living. A good conscience. There are lots of people who have a seared conscience. Their conscience is destroyed. They steal, they cheat, they do all kinds of terrible things, and they don't have any remorse. You see, to people like that, God is not going to speak to them. Because they're not obeying the word. If they're obeying the word, they're not going to be lying and cheating and defrauding and doing all those things. Then there will also be their conscience. 
And the thing about conscience is that you see, conscience speaks to you for a while. After a while, if you are not heeding that conscience, the conscience shuts up. It becomes seared. That's why you see some people who think that <laughs> they, th they think that good is evil and they think that evil is good. You know, <laughs> there, there was an accountant that was managing an account for a very, very rich man. I mean, we're talking billions. And so he took some millions out of this money. And the rich man found out, a Nigerian, okay? They're both Nigerians. The, the, now, if you are listening to this and you're in a foreign country, I tell you, it's not just in Nigeria that we have fraudsters and thieves and stealers. They are in every country. You know that, don't you? Right. So, <laughs> well, I say, hey, I know that Nigeria. No, it's not just Nigeria. They are all over the world, okay? All right. So, so this man takes some millions and then the rich man finds out. I say, yeah. Why did you do this and all that? You know, he's going to send the police after him and all that. And you know what the man that stole said? He said, what is wrong with the man? We're talking about billions of naira. How much did I steal? He didn't steal more than 10 million naira and he's, he's making noise. What has happened to his conscience? See it. No remorse. He doesn't even feel bad. He just feels that. <laughs> No matter how much money the rich man has, it is the rich man's money. It's the rich man's money. As an accountant, he's going to be paid for the work he's doing. He doesn't need to steal. He doesn't need that conscience seared. Let me tell you another story. We are talking about how a particular church, they wanted to buy a property. And so they set up a kind of committee, and then part of this committee were lawyers. They said, look, go and investigate, settle on the amount, let the church know. They are members of the church, this committee, they are members of the church. So let the church know, and then come back, tell us the amount, and then we're going to pay it. So they start having meetings. They're having meetings with the family who is selling the property, and then they're having meetings amongst one another. And then somebody said, okay, fine. The family has said they're going to sell this thing for 25 million. We are going to tell the church that this thing is 35 million. Because we have to have our own courts. And one person amongst them says, wait, 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 wait a minute. We're lawyers, right? We're professionals. That's why the church called us together, okay? Are we going to collect professional fees for this work? Should they collect professional fees or not? Should they collect professional fees or not? They should not. It's their church. All of them are still the ones who will contribute to buy this thing. So this, all of them said, of course, we're going to collect professional fees. Ah. So this one lawyer stood and said, wait. Is our church. We're going to collect professional fees. Then on top of that, you are going to inflate the amounts and we're going to tell the church that. It is, they said, I cannot be a part of that. My conscience. All of them shut him up and said, what's wrong with you? Ah, God is the one. When God creates avenues to bless us. Don't miss divine appointments. And they shut this person up and told the person, you dare not go and tell the pastor that this is what we're doing. Ah, may God help pastors who are fake brethren. I thank God that God has blessed us with honest people. All the honest people shout hallelujah. hallelujah. It's such a great blessing. It's both ways. You thank God for us that we are people of integrity. We also thank God for you that you are people of integrity. It's both ways. Amen? So what are we talking about? Conscience. If people are going to be led into miraculous living, you know, those people, they may steal that money, but they will find out that what they will pay will be way, way, way beyond that money that is too. They can't expect miracles from God anymore. They've used their own hand to conjure up their miracles. So God is not going to be involved in their lives anymore. Your conscience will speak to you. It will prick you. You may be in the midst of people who have been stealing for years and you're now getting there and they think you're going to join them. Let them know. No, my conscience forbids it. My conscience forbids it. I remember, you know, my mom had this shop many years ago and there were some girls walking with her in the shop. And there was one of them who had become a born-again Christian. So we were working with these people and then I think they were sent to procure something or maybe they sold something that was a volume. And they decided they were going to share it. And I think when they were sharing it and they gave her, you know there are times somebody just says, take this 500 naira. You just take the 500 naira, you go and buy food, you eat the food. Then it's after that, say, wait, by the way, the 500 naira you gave me, take you say, I know it wasn't me that gave you, we shared it from something that's that's what we made. So, you know, there are times things are happening. Anyhow, they gave this money to this girl. She collected it, but she hadn't spent it. From the time she received the money, she began to have a headache. And the headache did not stop until the next day. 
Immediately she got back to the shop. She went to my mom to say, this is what had happened. They gave me this. And I have gone back to them to tell them, take your money. Because since you gave me this, <laughs> this money, my heart has not rested. I'm, I have started having headache. That's somebody who still, have what? Who, who still has what? Conscience. God would lead you through your conscience. And you have to be obedient to your conscience. Amen? Hebrews 13, 8. Hebrews 13, 18. Pray for us, for we trust we have a good conscience. We have what? We have what? A good conscience. In all things, willing to live honestly. Make sure you have a good conscience, a pure conscience. Number three, obedience, the, <laughs> your key to the miraculous, your key to miraculous living. Number three, obedience to rules. Obedience to rules. When they are laid down rules, you've got to obey these rules. You cannot live your life in conflict with the rules and then assume that God is still going to be leading you and be blessing you. But if you're living your life in accordance with the rules, then you can be sure that God will continue to lead you and to bless you and to produce miracles for you. Look at 1 Peter chapter 2. 1 Peter chapter 2. 1 Peter chapter 2. Are you still here? 1 Peter chapter 2. Amen. We're going to read from the 13th verse. 1 Peter chapter 2. Are you there? It says, submit yourselves to every ordinance of man for the Lord's sake. Whether it be to the king as supreme or unto governors as unto them that are sent by him for the punishment of evil to us. And for the praise of them that do well. For so is the will of God that with well-doing you may put to silence the ignorance of foolish men. Now, verse 15 says, what is the will of God? The will of God is that you obey your governors. Amen? The will of God is that you submit to every ordinance, every rule. Whether it's the king, whether it's the governor, when there are rules set, you submit yourself and you obey those rules. That's the will of God. That's the will of God. Now, I know that in this, in the, you know, we do a lot of things that are against the rules. I'll give you an example. There's traffic. And you're in a hurry to get somewhere. But the traffic is only on one side. <coughs> Come on. And you see the traffic ahead. What do you do? You turn around on that same lane that is supposed to be going in, in a direction, going north. You stay on that lane and then you turn around and you are driving south on that lane. What have you done? Come on, talk to me, Lagosians. What have you done? Oh, you are already looking at me and say, oh, Pastor, if we don't do that, we'll be late for work. No, get, get up earlier. Leave for work earlier. Amen? And check your spirit. God will tell you if you leave later than five minutes' time, you're going to get into serious. Life. You know, sometimes some of this traffic is just five minutes. If you can just get out of that place before it builds up, that's it. So God will tell you, don't, don't break the rules. Don't, don't break the rules. Amen? Hallelujah. Amen. Is this workable? Yes, it is workable. Now, if you can reverse, there's no law against reversing. You can reverse and reverse and reverse. Hallelujah. And reverse. Because you are still on the lane that you are supposed to be. You are still facing the right direction. Reversing is allowed, is it not? Yes, as long as it's not the freeway. It's not the express. You are allowed to reverse. But do you know that there's also a rule in developed countries? In developed countries, I don't know if that rule is in Nigeria, but in developed countries, you cannot reverse beyond a particular point. Do you know that? So you can't reverse for one kilometer, for instance. You can't just, <laughs> but you can reverse within a short amount of time. You've got to know the rules. Sometimes people say, these, you know, people in authority, the uniform people, they've got me. They've done. But you know, sometimes it's because we've done something wrong. We have. And so then they call you. That's not the devil persecuting you. That's not the devourer setting in. Is that you broke the rule. And therefore, you have to pay the penalty. That's how it works. And by the way, you don't pay the penalty in the corner. You go and pay the penalty, the full amount. Hallelujah. Uh, pay it into the bank. Hallelujah. Top your everyone saying, you know, the full amount is part of the rules. It's part of the rules. Now, are you going to be tempted? You will be tempted. 
I was driving somewhere yesterday and you know, when you get to, there's this roundabout that when you get there, instead of getting to the roundabout, you can actually turn before the roundabout. How many of you know, are you supposed to turn before the roundabout? Are you not supposed to make the roundabout and use the roundabout to turn? So I'm thinking, I'm looking ahead, I'm thinking, it looks as if there will be some kind of traffic. It just looks as if some cars are kind of stopped. And I'm thinking, you know, I'm kind of running late. I'm in a hurry. I just need to just turn. I don't know. That would be breaking the rule. The car in front of me, you know, like temptation, the car, the car in front of me, guess what it does? He just turns there. I'm saying, no, I'm going to do the right thing. So I go and I make, and in fact, there are some policemen standing right there. And I just make my round turn and I find out that actually there was no traffic after all. You know, some things look like traffic. Then you now get there and you find out that there wasn't really traffic. Then I was able to get out of there. Suppose I had broken that rule and I turned. Then I'll be telling you obeying the rule this morning. Hello. And then I'll have to be repenting as I'm telling you. <laughs> Obey the rules. Amen? Obey the rules. If you expect God to continue to bless you, you've got to obey the rules of the land. Look at Titus chapter 3 verse 1. Titus chapter 3 verse 1. <clears throat> Amen. Titus chapter 3 verse 1. Children, Obey the rules of the family. Mom says no watching of television past 9 o'clock. That's the rule. Even if mom has traveled, keep the rule. Amen? I said amen. amen. Dad says drink only water for the next one month as a family. We need to cut down on our sugar. Everybody drink only water. Come on now. Okay, there's a rule that needs to be set, eh? <laughs> the Holy Spirit is speaking to some families. <laughs> so for a whole month, I'm going to drink only water. You tell all the children, that's the rule. Now, the parents are not at home. Children, I'm talking to you now. And a guest comes. You say, auntie, please, you need to take juice. Auntie says, I don't want to say, ah, auntie, you must take this juice. Because you know when you open that juice and you pour one glass for auntie, Auntie will not take more than a glass. There will still be the remaining. And then auntie has taken the one glass. And then you now share. The When auntie has gone, you share the remaining. Guess what? You have broken the rule. What did mommy and daddy say? No sweet things. Only water. Obey the rules. Amen. Mm. <clears throat> Hallelujah. Let me talk about another rule. Amen. <laughs> I want to say another rule. In this house, we do our homework, and we do our homework on time. That's the rule. Before we watch TV, before we go out and play, we must finish our homework. You obey the rule. That's the rule. I say, well, mommy and daddy are not at home. Like, There's no adults at home. It's us children. We're just going to do what we want. Obey the rule. Obey the rule. Daddy and mommy do not do parties, and they don't like parties, and you're a teenager. Hey! And your friends have heard that, you know what, your parents are not going to be around for a time. They say, your birthday is around that time. Let's come to your house and have a rave. Pare. Oh, oh. <laughs> come on now. And you're like, ah, yeah. ah, but you know, my parents, I said, your parents will not know. They're not going to be around. How many of you have seen this advert on, um, on the internet about the guy who has a party? And um, they've had this bad party. Things are broken down. They've broken the furniture. I don't know what kind of party. They were dancing on the stool, dancing on the chairs. And so they've, I mean, you've not seen that clip. Oh, some of you have seen it, okay? So they've broken a number of things. Then he gets a call from his parents. And they're coming back that morning. Hey! He immediately starts calling repair men. Everybody, everybody, to quickly, quickly, come and fix this. He's cleaning, he's scrubbing, he's doing everything. Ah! In the nick of time, he finishes doing everything. And the parents come in. And ah, the mother looks around and says, wow, everywhere is so clean. That's so nice. And the boy is like, yeah, that's good. And then the telephone rings. The mother picks the phone. And it's one of the people who attended the party last night. He says, ah, he thinks he's talking to the, you know, the guy. He says, ah, that party last night at your house was a bar. The mother says, ah, you, you had party for this house yesterday? <laughs> that's what we call busted. <laughs> It's just been caught. Keep to the rules. You know the Bible says your sin will find you out. 
Your sin will find you. It will always come out. It may be later, but it will come out. But you know, keep the rules. Tap your neighbor and smile at your neighbor and tell your neighbor, keep the rules. <laughs> keep the rules. <laughs> Say, you know that money is not for that purpose. Keep the rules. <laughs> You know, we're supposed to save that money towards getting properties. Hey, keep the rules. Keep the rules. Amen? All right? I did say we should go to Titus, chapter 3, verse 1. It says, put them in mind to be subject to principalities and powers, to obey magistrates, to be ready to every good work. Be subject to principalities and powers. The rulers, those who have authority over you, be subject. And be ready to every good work. To do everything that you need to do. Number four, obedience to your pastor. Obedience is the key to miraculous living. Obedience to your pastor. There's so many times instructions are going to come through the pastor. Instructions will come from the pulpit. Instructions will come through text message. Amen. Sometimes you may just get a text message that says we're having a meeting and so, so, and so, and you didn't plan for the meeting. You were planning to be sleeping at that time. Obedience. Obedience is what is required at that time. Amen. Especially when the text message arrives in your phone at 5 a.m. and tells you, we're calling for fasting today from now till 6 p.m. And that afternoon, you are planned, you are going to go for a five-course buffet. Hallelujah. So what do you do? Obedience. Amen. Somebody say, oh, pastor, you don't understand. The buffet is an official event. I don't know any official events where they arrest anybody for not eating when they get there. They will not arrest you. When you get there, drink water. Or drink nothing. And just stay there and smile and talk to everybody and all that. And if you don't even show as if you are fast. You know some people, they don't want anybody to pity them. <sighs> and I say, ah, what's wrong now? I don't even know for this past myself. <laughs> Be obedient to your pastor. Hebrews chapter 13 verse 17. Hebrews chapter 13 verse 17. Are you there? It says, obey them that have the rule over you and submit yourselves for they watch for your souls as they that must give account." That they may do it with joy and not with grief. For that is unprofitable for you. Meaning that when you obey your pastors, there's profit for you. When you disobey your pastors, there's what? Non-profit. It becomes unprofitable. But it says you can profit. How do you profit? By obeying. I wish I could tell you that every instruction that we're going to give you is going to be pleasant instruction. You know, instructions that ah, you just want to do. But there will be some that will come and you're like, oh, 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 oh are we going to do that? One month evangelism. Hallelujah. Amen. That's not easy on the flesh, is it? It's not easy on the flesh. But you obey. Especially when we do something. You know, sometimes, you know, this church, eh, we really listen to the Holy Spirit. Amen. Sometimes we just come on Sunday like this. I'll see everybody. We're going out on evangelism. Come on, shout hallelujah. Obedience. And you're just thinking, I was just planning to come to church and just sit down and just enjoy the service. My plan, in fact, the kind of shoes I'm wearing, come on now, ladies. The kind of shoes I'm wearing are not the shoes that are for evangelism. But the Bible says your feet must be shod with the shoes of the gospel. Hallelujah. So any shoes that you wear that you cannot preach the gospel with, sister, you are not supposed to have those shoes. Revelation. I'm serious. You have some shoes that they are too high. You cannot do evangelism with it. because It means your feet are not short. Amen? With the preparation of the gospel of peace. You are not prepared to preach the gospel of peace. You should be prepared to preach the gospel of peace. I'm sure you know I can do evangelism like this. Hallelujah. Amen? There are some shoes I have worn. Sometimes somebody buys me a lovely, oh, bought me one lovely pair of shoes. Ah, beautiful shoes. Hey! I was like, yes, this is good. Hallelujah. So I wore it to church. Then we just started praise and worship. And I am standing and I'm doing like this. And doing like that. Ah, I said, this should fine, sir. Ah, I'm still standing. Oh, we praise your name. Hallelujah. We praise your ah. I said, I beg. <laughs> make, make, <laughs> make uncle no break for beauty. I said, I beg protocol. Help me bring my slippers. <laughs> Hallelujah! We 
wisdom dictates that you have a second pair of shoes. <laughs> Especially if it's a new pair of high shoes. So what am I talking about? Preparation of the gospel of prayer. I'm saying, well, you can wear your lovely shoes, but please bring an extra pair. So if you arrive in church and you find out it's evangelism, don't answer because of the shoes, you will not go. Don't worry. Just exchange. Hallelujah. Repackage. Amen. Then you go. Tap your name and say, you go for evangelism. You go. You go. So you obey. What are some of the areas where you must obey the pastor? In the area of giving. Someone will tell you we're taking pledges. We can tell you we're taking pledges. We're taking pledges right now. We're getting ready for an event. The event is going to cost us millions of naira because we want to give. It's about giving back. The Bible says we should remember the poor. And we're very quick to remember the poor. So it's going to involve a lot of giving. Obey and give. Obey and give. Don't say we've just finished one giving. <coughs> and there's another one. Amen? You look at your account sometimes and you're wondering that if I even give another major amount, because you know there are some that your habit is to give major amounts. I don't believe in when we're having a program, I don't give. No, I give. When you look at the pledges, you find out that what I have given is among the many times, maybe top three, top four. I give. I give. Amen? Oh, you're giving is giving, and you look at everything and you're wondering how this is going to work out. Amen. But somehow it works out. And then there's another opportunity to give again. You give. Obedience. Hallelujah. Obedience. Let me tell you. We as pastors do not tell you to do what we ourselves are not doing. When God tells us this is what the church is doing, we do it first. We do it first. Amen. Don't think this is a do as I say, not do as I do. We do it first. We live the same life. And that's why we live our lives in a transparent way. That you can check, you can look at any area and you can find out that no, all you are seeing is the word of God. Hallelujah. Now when we are like that, that places more premium on you to be obedient. Because we're not going this way and then telling you to go this way. You can see, you can follow us as we're following Christ. You've got to be obedient. That's how miracles happen. That's how miracles happen. There are times we tell you to do something you may not even want to do. And then you find out that you do it. Later on you realize. Let me give you a practical example. You know, when we give you opportunity to serve, the service you serve in church, you know, it affects every area of your life. Every. It affects your parenting. It affects your work. It affects your business. Are you listening to me? It affects when you are bidding for a contract. Because if you have ever had opportunity, we say maybe worker service, you are going to share with us for five minutes and you take that opportunity. The day you have to bid for a contract and you find out that some big wigs that you normally see on the TV. You understand what I'm talking about? You normally read about them in magazine. You now find out that they are sitting there. They're there at the panel. And you're going to present before them. You know, because you've been standing before people, it enables you. The, the grace of God will come. And you will be able to stand and be able to do it. You know, you may be shaking internally, but somehow God will give you that grace. And, you stand, and at the end of the day, we say, wow, this is such a good presentation. But the issue is that the obedience you have to the pastor. When we tell you do this, do that, do that, you're doing it is what is now standing for you even in your place of work. Amen? Obedience leads to miraculous living. Number five, obedience to the Holy Spirit. Obedience to the Holy Spirit. Especially in the area of evangelism, the area of giving, and the area of forgiveness. Obey the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit will speak in Acts chapter 13. In Acts chapter 13, Verses 1 to 4. The Bible says that there were certain prophets and teachers. And as they ministered to the Lord, the Holy Spirit said, Separate me, Paul and Barnabas, for the ministry whereunto I have sent them. And the Bible says they spent time fasting and praying. They laid hands on them and then they sent them to go. You've got to be obedient to the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is sometimes going to tell you, listen carefully to me. Listen. And I think I'm going to ask this in form of a question. How many of you have come to church before and... Somebody just gave you something and you are not even expecting the person to give you something. Let me see your hand up. And you didn't even tell anybody you had a need, but somebody gave you something. Okay. If that has happened to you, that shows those people they are yielding to the Holy Spirit. One of the ways the Holy Spirit will lead you, in fact, one of the foundation ways that you know the Holy Spirit is speaking to you is that he will start telling you to give. He will tell you to give something and then you find out you give it to the person. They say, how did you know I needed this? How did you know this? How did you know that? And you're like, you know, I just felt in my heart. I felt that I should do this. Then you realize that, oh, that was God that was actually telling me about that particular thing. Amen? That's how you know the leading of the Holy Spirit. Yield to it in giving. Yield to it. Yield to it. Sometimes you may not even know someone. You may be meeting somebody that you've never met in church before. And the person just happens to be sitting next to you. You even look at the person. The person looks well-dressed. Everything looks together. There's no inkling. And the Holy Spirit is just impressing on you, you know? 
You have some cash on you. Say, put 5,000 naira and give it to that person. Ah, you are questioning. How can you be telling me to give 5,000 naira? Say, take 5,000 and give it to the person. Take 5,000 and give it to the person. You know, finally, after much struggling, maybe the service is even over. The person is going, you now run after a person. Let me obey the Holy Spirit. Sometimes you hand it over the person. The person is almost crying. Ah, and you are wondering, it doesn't make sense. If you look at the person and you look at yourself, the person looks richer than you. The person says, well, you don't know what I've been going through. I was going home wondering there was nothing in the house. You know, appearances can be very deceptive. Obey the Holy Spirit in the area of giving. Let me say something. The Bible says God gives seed to the sower. 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 6. God gives what? That whole passage from, 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 from verse 6. Say, if you sow sparingly, you reap sparingly. If you sow bountifully, you reap bountifully. God is able to make all grace abound towards that. You always, having all sufficiency, may be able to abound to every good work. I said, he has dispersed that problem. He has given to the poor. His righteousness remains forever. He gives what? Seed to the sower. Bread to what? To the eater. Pause and think about this. Which one is multiplied? Seed or bread? I'll say it again. Which one is multiplied? Seed or bread? Who does he give bread to? When the eater eats the bread, what happens? He has to be waiting for another bread or begging for another bread. He has eaten it, has gone. When seed is given to the sower, what happens? It multiplies. It multiplies. Whereas you are somebody who can give, I'm telling you there's no limit to your prosperity. God will bless you in ways you're expecting. God will also bless you in ways that you're not expecting. Hallelujah. There's a lady here you love to give and you've been giving, things, giving a lot of things to people. And then you're at a stage right now where you need some financial miracle. And then you're saying, ah, God, I've been giving and giving. Why do I need this financial miracle? And God says, I should tell you that in 40 days time, there's going to be the exact amount that you need and then there will be more. Amen. Glory to God. Finally, obedience to the prophetic word. Obedience to the prophetic word. You've got to obey the prophetic word. When a prophetic word comes, I say, God is saying this. And God is saying you should do this. And you've got to do it. There are some prophetic words that are information. There are some prophetic words that are instructions. Actions that you have to take for certain things to happen. And if you don't take the action, then the thing that should happen will then not happen. Not because God does not want it to happen, but because you didn't do the prerequisites. You know, there are some courses we took in university. We call them prerequisites. And you start most of those courses usually from, you start those courses usually from what level? 100 level. You start those courses from 100 level. They tell you they are prerequisite. What that means is that if you don't do that course in 100 level and pass it, you cannot do the next course. It's like, you know, a cascading um, um, course. So you have to pass 101 of these, then 201, then 301, then 401. And that's the way some blessings are. When you obey in this area, then the next level of blessing shows up. Then God will give you some further instructions. If you obey also in that area, another level of blessing shows up. Listen to me. When it is time for you to hand, handle millions, you will not be struggling with thousands. When it is time for you to handle billions, you will not still stay on the level of millions. Every level that God has ordained for you to be in, in the time that you should be in, that will be the manifestation for you in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Obedience to the prophetic word. Look at Acts chapter 11 verses 26 to 30. Acts chapter 11 verses 26 to 30. Acts chapter 11 verses 26 to 30. It says, and when he had found him, he brought him to Antioch. And it came to pass that a whole year they assembled themselves with the church and taught much people. And the disciples were called Christians first in Antioch. And in those days came prophets from Jerusalem to Antioch. And there stood up one of them named Agabus and signified by the spirit that there should be great death throughout all the world. That means great famine. Okay? Great scarcity. He said there will be great death throughout all the world which came to pass in the days of Claudius Caesar. Then the disciples, every man according to his ability, determined to send relief unto the brethren which dwelt in Judea, which also they did and sent it to the elders by the hands of Barnabas and Saul. Look up at me. There's a prophetic word that was given. There's going to be a famine. 
the famine is going to be in different parts of the world. Now, at that time, you know, they could be thinking of bread. But what did they think of? They thought of seed. They obeyed that prophetic word. That, okay, if there's going to be famine, we know that once we sow seed, there will always be harvest. So the Bible says they sent seed. You got to key into the prophetic word. Hallelujah. You got to key into the prophetic word. The prophetic word has been given and there's an action to take. Take the action and do it. God has already told us that this season is a season of bountiful harvest. It is a season of bountiful harvest. So be expectant. Hallelujah. Key into that. What are some of the things you should do during the season when God says it's a season of bountiful harvest? Sow seed. Because you know that whatever seed you sow, there's going to be rapid harvest. So you sow, you sow, you sow. You look for something. You sow. Hallelujah. And let me say this to you. Every one of us can sow. There's nobody that is so poor that they cannot sow. Nobody. Every one of us can sow. There's something you can sow. Now, now, do you know that sometimes people don't have money? I'm not saying you should do this, okay? I'm just telling you. This is just part of the message. Sometimes people don't have money and they remove their earrings. <laughs> Senior pastor went to preach in one church. They were not a large church. It was some years back. They were not a large church. I'm not even sure if they were more than 50 in that church. And he preached, you know, and people were so taught and just felt we're going to give. But some of them didn't have anything. When they, <laughs> when they packed the offering and they gave it to senior pastor, guess what? There were shoes. Shoes in the offering. Because people look ah. So I'm thinking to myself now, there are not even people who came with spear shoes. Or spare shoes. They didn't have anything. They thought I must give something. They removed their shoes and they gave it. Earrings. People give earrings. I must give something. I've told you, I'm not saying this so that you can't do it. Amen? But you've got to always key to the Holy Spirit. Everybody can give. Everybody can give. Sometimes there's a word. They say, maybe some people should come and give even in certain amounts. And maybe it's a major amount that is mentioned. And you look at yourself and say, I don't have this amount. I don't have it. You know, the little that you have, what should you do? Give it. Give it. God knows your heart. He knows your condition. He knows your state. And when you do that, you remember there was a widow that Jesus Christ, as Jesus Christ was watching what people were putting, all she did was she put in too much. Jesus Christ said, she's given more than any other person. So which tells me the principle is not the, how big the amount is. It is how much the sacrifice, how much you obey the Holy Spirit. Amen? And then obeying the Holy Spirit in the area of forgiveness. There are lots of people who are working in unforgiveness. And they don't realize that this unforgiveness, and I'm speaking by the Holy Spirit now. They don't realize that this area of unforgiveness is actually keeping them from the miraculous. And God has told you so many times, you need to forgive that person. We need to give that person a call. You need to send a gift to that person. You need to let it go. It's the past. Let it go completely. You need to treat that person like that situation never occurred. And you know, sometimes we say, I forgive him, but there's still a tiny shred. There's still a tiny piece. And God is saying to you today, forgive completely. Forgive completely like it never happened. Let it go. Don't think of punishing that person again. Don't think, I'm going to get my own back. Just let it go completely. And when you obey that and you release your heart completely to forgiveness, then blessings that have been reserved will begin to flow into your life in Jesus' name. Amen? Let's bow our heads and let's talk to God right now. God has spoken to you in diverse ways. God has spoken to you in diverse ways. Begin to tell God, God, I will obey. I know it's the key to miraculous living. When the servants obeyed Jesus, they took the water and the water turned to wine. I am going to obey. The commandments that you've given me, the instructions that you've given me, I'm going to obey. I am going to obey. Obedience is tied even to promotion. It's tied to promotion. You've got to obey. When you obey, then there's, there's an unleashing of blessings. Oh, masekerekele barapapa. Let's talk to the Lord. Let's talk to the Lord. Masumborokolo barapapa pashata. What has God been speaking to you about that you need to obey? You need to obey me in this area. You need to do this. You need to forgive. You need to walk in love. You need to walk in. You need to let it go. Let's talk to God and say, God, I'm all yours. Is God telling you you need to pray more? Then pray more. Is God telling you you need to fast? Then fast. Obey the prophetic word. Obey the word that has come to you. When you obey, then there are more blessings. Perhaps you are here today and you are not born again. You have got to obey the word of God. 
It says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That whoever believes in him will not perish, but have everlasting life. Believe in Jesus Christ today. We want to give you an opportunity to believe in Jesus Christ. Because for you to have a relationship with God, for you to experience miracles from God, you've got to believe in Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is not just a prophet. Jesus Christ is the son of the living God. He is the son of the living God. Jesus Christ died on the cross of Calvary for you. He paid the price for your sins. He rose again. He rose again and he's alive forevermore. He's seated at the right hand of God in glory. If you will believe Jesus Christ in your heart, Jesus, he will come in and he will change all your life. You become a child of God. I want to give you an opportunity to receive... I want to give you an opportunity to receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. If you are here, you have not received Jesus, can you please lift up your right hand? Lift up your right hand wherever you are and we'll pray for you to receive Jesus. Lift up your right hand wherever you are, we'll pray for you to receive Jesus. Or maybe you say, I've received Jesus before, but I've strayed. I've gone far away from God, but I want to return. I want to return. Like the prodigal, I want to come back. I want to turn my heart back to God. I want to give you that opportunity. As we go into communion, communion is for those who are born again. If you are not born again this afternoon, I want to give you an opportunity to receive Jesus as Lord and Savior. If you are backsliding, you've gone away from God, I want to give you an opportunity to get back to God. So if you are not right with God, can you please lift up your hand and I'm going to pray for you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And those of us who are right with God, let's begin to thank God and commit ourselves to him. And say, Father, I thank you for the communion. I thank you for Jesus Christ who died on the cross of Calvary for my sins, who took away my sins, who rose again so that I may be set free. Begin to thank God for salvation. Begin to thank God for the forgiveness of your sins. Begin to thank God for healing in your body. The word of God says you have been healed. By the stripes of Jesus, you were healed. You were already healed. That's a prophetic word. The Bible says Jesus Christ, though he was rich, yet for our sakes he became poor, that we through his poverty may be made rich. You will be made rich. You made rich. Made rich, made rich, made rich. I want you to key into that. That as we take communion, you take every blessing. You receive every blessing of the new covenant into your life. Thank you for listening. If you need more information on Reverend Dela's messages, log on to www.gfconline.org or call the following numbers. 0177-44213 and 080-888-47. Double two three. God bless you.